Our next guest brought to you by the Arnold Palmer Design Whistler Golf Club. Counting down to opening day on May 10th. Club reminds organizers of groups of 12 or more. Get in touch. Get on those summer tea times. The prime times are filling up fast and just for reaching out, you, the organizer, to hold that tea time. You get to play for free. Get Whistler Golf bears. Club. Oh, yes, we'll take care of the rest. Talk about your group. Whistlergolf.com slash groups. The Bears are back. You can follow all the spring preparations at Whistler Golf. Podcasters are wondering what I was referencing. It was, yes, there's Bears there's B-roll YouTube. in yeah, the YouTube yeah. show. And the reason fact, enough. The last time we were there, we saw a bear just amble across the 18th yeah. fairway. Didn't replace this bike. Absolutely. Yeah. Joining us now from In Goal Media, the goalie guru of them all, Mr. Kevin Woodley, back here with Sakara and Price. Kevin, how are we doing? I'm good, but I said the B-roll could not include footage of me playing goal because the gig would be up and those bears rolling around on the green kind of resemble the way I... <laughs> Is that your style? <laughs> yeah, that's so, it. But huh? you'll see. I believe they call that the reverse XH. Uh, it's just you starfished <laughs> on the... You've, uh, heard of, you've heard of Dominic Castrick's the barrel roll. Well, that yeah. was... <laughs> hey, honestly, not to get off track there, I was thinking the other day, Hasha came across my timeline. I was like, damn, did he play an entertaining goal? He did. Um, if more, if more of them could play Dominic Ashick's style. who's the craziest goalie that's like getting regular action in the NHL right now? Right. Oh, that's a good one. Um, Flower still likes to throw. Yeah, up. yeah. Uh -huh. And I think it's 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 limited to a move or two. Um, like it's not all over the place all the time. Ala Dom. Yeah. But Pyotr Kochetkov, um, okay. you know, he is not shy to throw out a very aggressive two pad stack poke check. He's got, I think he got called for <laughs> chirping, uh the other night on a breakaway of all things. Dom was best line I ever heard about Dom. And, and I actually got a chance to sit down and talk to him about like the barrel roll. And there was a very specific mechanics to it. Shove the blocker out to force the guy wide. And now that I know he's forced out wide, he can't elevate the puck because he's had to extend his hands. So then I roll over on my back and I lay my arms flat. That's my new, that's my new legs and my butterfly. And my torso comes up and my pads go straight. Basically it's a reverse butterfly. Like there was thought that went into it. Upside with down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what did they say? Uh, brain like a computer and body like a slinky. It was mad amazing. scientists. And the other thing is he was entertaining to watch. He was entertaining to speak to as well. Yes. Dominic Kashik, uh, a great conversation and a humorous one more often than not. Okay. Let's get to the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, this five-week injury for Thatcher Denko, uh, what's your understanding of how the uh, rest and rehabilitation went in the process over these last five weeks and the whole notion that they targeted this Calgary game for his return? Well, I mean, targeted, and that was the 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 high side, sort of the, the quick return side. Like, I think this is an injury that for a lot of people, or if you had a lot of time, you might take longer. But Thatcher was determined to get back. And, and please don't mistake that for saying he rushed back. Like, he did the work. And I think what people don't understand is Thatcher's done the work since the last time he got hurt, which was related. You know, I mean, the only reason he got hurt last year is he had a compensatory pattern in his movement from the knee surgery the year before. So that it's almost like, like, a, like separate injuries and always injury prone. Like it's actually just one injury that was never addressed properly in terms of the recovery and rehab. And sort of we all know where things were with this team. Um, you know, and, and, you know, frankly, the medical staff being run by a golf chiropractor last year, right? Like things are better now. And he's done the work. He's changed how he trains in the years since then. And so his body was ready to sort of dig into this. You heard talk it yesterday, twice a day with the rehab he was in. Credit to the medical team for the work they did, the hours they put in. I, I watched him on the ice, guys. Like, I don't think – I know there's people that are like, oh, what if he gets hurt again in the last couple of games? Like, if he does, it's going to be because something freak happens out there, not because it's a, a reoccurring injury. He is flying out there. He's being put into some of the most stressful positions you can as a goaltender, and he's moving into them with pace and power and precision. I am not worried about the sort of physical or technical elements of Thatcher Demko's game at this point. Is two games enough to be playoff racer sharp, Kev? I mean, is it ideal? Pro maybe not, but it's funny because outside of the scrum, we had a conversation after his first practice last week, and I had kind of put it on radio. Like, your, your upside is – Think of it as the preseason. Starting NHL goalies play two, maybe some guys play two and a half games in the preseason. Haven't been on the ice all summer. They work through camp to get their technique down, and then they play two games, and boom, they're off and running. Thatcher Demko was the best goalie in the world for the first six weeks of the regular season. By such a wide margin, he pretty much lapped the field. That's where the Vesna Trophy case was built. He was the best. So 
that was what I saw as the upside, right? Hey, like this guy knows how to come off of a, uh, you know, a time away. And this wasn't lengthy. A month to five weeks isn't a huge gap. Um, and so I put it to him. I'm like, hey, was I oversimplifying that when I, when I said that? He's like, what, what are you talking about? I said, well, because some people are worried that two games might not be enough. And he like genuinely seemed surprised that that was a concern. So I don't mm -hmm. think he thinks it's a concern. Obviously, I'm not comparing game one of the regular season to the first game of the playoffs and the intensity that comes with it. But that first game this year against the Edmonton Oilers, as we remember, all the narratives going into it about having to face Edmonton back to back to start, like those were pretty intense games too. So um, a, a little bit at ease because of that. And if you want another example, an extreme example, best goalie for the last, what, six weeks in the NHL has been Frederick Anderson. And he took pretty much the whole season coming off of the blood clots. He's rested. He's fresh. He's playing great. I think the hopes and the upside is that Thatcher Demko comes back the same way. Well, and the funny thing is, is, you know, we'll get definitive word on this in the next 36 hours, but if they face the Preds, he will have had two starts with UC Soros having none over the probably seven to eight days between games for the Predators. So if it is Canucks Predators, the Canucks will have the the more sharp in mode sort of goaltender over the Preds. Yeah, and I, honestly, like I think you know, he kind of reiterated this to me, you know, away from the scrum too. Like like four to five weeks versus you know three or four months would might be a different story in terms of right. getting back up to game speed. Um, we saw how he came back last year and how good he was, and don't forget that was him coming back to an entirely different system because they'd switch coaches, right? Like everything and, and everybody is more comfortable with the way they execute within this system. He trusts his reads more. They've become more innate now within this system and with this group than they were coming back last year. I just think that doesn't mean, none of this means it's a guaranteed success or it's going to be easy. I don't want to pretend that. Um, but I just don't think a lot of the consternation I hear around his return matches how he and the group feels about the way they expect this to go. Can he still win the Vezina? No, I mean, that's hella bucks now. Uh, the, yeah. the, the tough part for Thatcher, not that that's, that's not the trophy he cares about, all the goalies, and hella buck will tell you the same thing. Um, but I thought the week preceding the injury was sort of the best we'd seen him yeah. since the first six weeks of the season. Like, he really looked like he was dialed in on his game. Uh, you know, I think of the LA game and some of the two on one saves he made in that one, uh, you know, just so that's the, you know, he was ahead of Hellebuck and goal saved above expected at that point. Um, and I think he would have had a chance to really build a margin where absolutely that case would have been a strong. He didn't one. lose his runner up position though, did he? He's going to be, he'll be first runner up. Uh, you know, it's interesting because GM's just, and I haven't even looked, I, it's gotten to the point now, guys, where I look at the fancy stats from ClearSight Analytics and barely touch the raw numbers. GM's look at save percentage and wins. Yeah, uh, I think he's still, what, like seventh in the league in wins despite missing a month or top five. So he's got a chance. Based on the fancy numbers, the two guys that are sort of between him and Hellebuck now are Jacob Markstrom. But the way things have fallen off a cliff for the past month, I don't see him getting a finalist nod from GM's. The other one that I think deserves it is Bennington. So um, it's almost like a bit of a case of attrition. It'll be people that make a case for Soros. Um, and, and he should have been a finalist last year. I really don't know how it shakes out because of the month he's missed. He certainly would have been without it. You know, I, honestly, you could put him, you could, you could put, I think Bennington deserves to be there at the end of the day. They're all buying for second or third because Hellebuck's just sort of put an exclamation point on this season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I reached out to Kevin last week when filling out my, uh, NHL all-star team ballot. So, uh, that is a finalist all-star team for second. Well, not first, but second or third team, I think still very much available. Casey DeSmith. And if things go well, Kevin, that might be the last we see Casey DeSmith in the Canucks school, right? You know, maybe he gets tossed into a, maybe ever a postseason. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying mm -hmm. into a postseason game. That's out of hand one way or the other, but that might be the last in terms of meaningful minutes. We saw we see from Casey DeSmith this year. What did you make of his season? And is there a case to bring him back? Do you think they will bring him back? Try to bring him back. Well, I think ultimately that's going to be decided based on what it costs, right? Like at the end of the day, he's a good fit here. And I think we saw in the post game on Saturday, the relationship that's been built between Thatcher and Casey come out. Uh, Thatcher comes out to sort of greet him and give him that big hug after a big emotion win in a really tough spot for him right so um yeah you absolutely can make a case to bring Casey to Smith back I just don't know given the progression of Seelovs and where he's at 
you know, in, in his career and what he costs relative to Casey to Smith, whether it's going to fit under the cap. Like to me, that's a, that, that really becomes almost as much a cap decision. And where do we spend our money? Because there's not a lot of high end on the open market this summer, but there's a lot of quality sort of one B guys. And we've seen in the past where that can create a bidding war. Look at Laurent Brassois. He's on a one-year deal in Winnipeg. He's His adjusted numbers are actually slightly better on a per-shot basis than Connor Hellebuck. He's had an exceptional year again in Winnipeg. The last time he did that, I think Vegas gave him two or three years at 2.5, 2.575. Like if the market gets driven up and Casey's all of a sudden looking at $2 million somewhere else, I know the goalie coach in LA is someone he worked with in Pittsburgh and, and, and has had a long-standing relationship with. I could I could see him basically getting priced out of where they are in terms of what they want to spend on their backup. Everything else, though, in terms of what he's given them, despite a few ups and downs when he had to take the reins as the number one for those seven straight starts, absolutely. Why wouldn't you bring him back? He doesn't give up bad goals. Um, you know, up until that run, one of the fewest sort of low percentage goal goalies in the entire National Hockey League. He'd only given up two to that point. And that's what you want out of your backup. A steadiness, the work ethic, the guy's... Battle hard for him because he works hard for them in practice. All the stuff that Tockett said during the year, not lip service. Like, it's legit. It's true. I've seen it go the other way. And Casey understands that role. And, you know, a lot of guys struggle in it. And he really does a nice job with it. I would bet Laurent Bossois gives you a hometown discount, too, uh, if if he was an option for the Vancouver Connect. Or they go super cheap with Seelofs is the other option. Is that bad developmentally, though? Should Seelofs be a def, you know a, a true number one or at least a 45-game a number one down in Abbotsford next season rather than well, a backup? If it is Seelofs based on you know finances and they believe he's ready, and I thought he showed signs um, both ways, like you make the argument both like You could go – you could say, like, if you have time, use it. I can't remember which – you know, Hall of Fame GM always used to preach that, but he's got another year where he doesn't require waivers. Now you could use that by just saying, Hey, we're going to resign Casey or get another guy who's on an NHL deal. And you're going to play a ton of minutes down there and you'll come up in injuries and we'll play you. Or you need three. Like we've seen that around the league. Mm-hmm. Arguably you need four that can, can come in and, and play if you need it, but you need at least three. So if you don't sign a guy in the two spot and you trust our tours in that role, you have to be able to find a guy to go into the three spot who you trust to come up in the NHL. Maybe a project guy a little bit, um, but you need somebody that you think can play in the National Hockey League. If you have that guy and Arturs is your backup, you can still, because of, and credit to the ownership group for bringing the, I've done this lots of times, bringing the ownership, the, the farm team to Abbotsford matters in this regard. Ian Clark did this with Jonas Corposalo. The Predators did it with UC Soros. You're with the team all week. You're an NHL goalie all week. But if you don't play and we get to the weekend and we know Thatcher's going and you're just going to be sitting on the bench on a Saturday and Abbotsford's down the road with two, you go down to Abbotsford and you play two. And the other guy, he comes up and sits on the bench on Saturday night. It's a way to sort of keep guys in the NHL working with NHL shooters, there's value there, working with the NHL goalie coach and still getting some games played. Uh, it's I wouldn't say it's a common practice, but there are some teams that have used this right around this time of Seelof's development path with some pretty prominent goalies that were on their way to futures as number ones. They use that method. Hey, um, some people midway through the year were talking about how Tola Pilo had leapfrogged. Uh, she loves uh, Kevin. Um, how close is Tola Pilo? Like, is that a real possibility? He took year? him out. Yeah, I mean, he took a big stride this year as the year went on, Matt. Uh, I got to watch a few games down in Abbotsford. It's been a little tricky with the, that's the downside of them being in town at the same time, is I don't get down there as much as I'd like, but I have watched him play a few games live. Uh, I, 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 you know, my opinion, he's probably not ready for the National Hockey League. There's still, but what he did that doesn't discount like first year pro in North America. A guy who wasn't on anybody's radar just a couple of years ago had a number of teams bid on his services last year, chose the Canucks in part because of their goaltending coach structure uh, and who they have in place at both levels and took a huge, like to, to, to push Seelovs and, and like you said, basically surpass him at a point this year in the American Hockey League as in your first year in North America. Guys, when they signed Sachenko, I thought he would be the one in the American League and that they would send uh, Tolapilo down to the ECHL to get games. So for him to earn them in the American League as a first-year North American pro is a huge positive sign. Does it mean he's ready for the NHL? From what I've seen, not necessarily. There's still work to be done. Marvelous stuff, Kevin. You're the best. Um, We always learn on goaltending when you join the show. Appreciate this, my friend. Enjoy the playoffs, huh? Our pleasure is all. Guys, I covered Seattle last year for the NHL.com, went down. Mm -hmm. 
I, I forgot how much I missed it till I was walking <laughs> on this yes. ledge in the sunshine. I cannot wait for this. It's been so long. I just I want to see the energy in the city, the sun out as we head to the rink. I can't wait for it. Are you a towel power guy? Do you want to see towel power? I'm assuming they're doing it right because I got to submit something to NHL.com about the things that I mean. Roger Nielsen's there's a statue of him waving a towel outside, so I'm <laughs> you assuming we'll yeah. have to be going back to it, right? right? We'll find out. Yeah, marvelous stuff. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.